this video presents a very important solution for massive companies that invested early into vectorizing all their data and using it on early chat agents now want to shift over to using their data in custom GPTs. These companies have a lot of their data stored on either public databases like Pinecon or local databases like Weaviet and it's all vectorized and is not currently accessible to GPTs. Moreover, custom GPTs have some very clear file limits and a lot of these companies would want to be able to access their files in custom GPTs more than just these limitations. It's very clear that this is going to become a very important solution for multiple companies going forward. So even if you've not yet run into this problem, I highly do suggest that you watch this entire video so that you have these skills available to you when you need them. If you are trying to solve this problem yourself though, I've got you fully set up with everything that you'll need. So let's sit back and enjoy one of the most complicated GPT setups you've ever seen. So to make it really easy to follow along with this video, let's start by focusing on how we get this data into Pinecon. This Jupyter Notebook is available in a link in the description and you can download it to use it to follow along. But what we're doing here is we're vectorizing a large file and uploading it onto Pinecon. Now the specific file that we're uploading is this PDF. This is a book about data science and so what we're going to be doing is, is we're going to be asking our custom GPT a lot of information about data science. So this is a pretty much a 126 page book that has a lot of information about data science and what we're going to do is we're going to vectorize it and upload it onto Pinecon. Now if you're dealing with this in an actual company situation your data will already be uploaded but let's just go through this process to make sure we all have the same information. Now once you've got the Jupyter Notebook what we're doing here is we're starting by importing some important libraries Langchain and .env. Alright great once we've got those imported what we want to do is we then want to load the PDF so you can see we're doing that here we're loading the PDF and then we're loading its data over here and then we go ahead and log out some important information about the book over here it just shows we have 126 documents and those are the number of pages that are in the book as well. Then we need to chunk up our data so of course we tend to do this while uploading data into Pinecon because we can't upload a long string of data into Pinecon with our limited setup. Great so we go ahead and split our data here and now we have nearly twice as many documents as we had before. Cool. Now what we want to do is we want to embed our documents and what you can see here is, is that we're using an open AI API to embed our documents. So here I've got my open AI API key and then I'm just going ahead and using the open AI embeddings to go ahead and embed all my documents. Now if you haven't yet got an open AI key here set up what you want to do is you want to replace my key over here with your own key so that you can run this on your own open AI backend and then we get to the part where we're setting our Pinecon. Now let me just walk you through this process because it can be a little bit tricky from time to time. Alright so once you're on your Pinecon console what you want to do is you want to create a new index. You just want to give it a name, specify the dimensions and mostly choose the starter pack here because the rest of them are premium and we don't need a really good pack for this particular use. And once you have your index set up now you'll have this information and what you want to do is you want to collect your Pinecon API key and your Pinecon environment and then just save them in here using this code over here. You just want to replace mine with yours. Then we go ahead and we initialize Pinecon and then we select an index name and what we're doing here is we are literally uploading our files using a loop here to make sure that we only upload the number of files that we can upload in a single go. Now normally this process continues with being able to query your documents and this code here does work so I do advise you to run it on your Jupyter Notebook copy that you've downloaded but we're not really going to do this right because we want our data inside of our custom GPT and there comes the real problem. So the problem that we have here is that all our data in our Pinecon database is stored as vector values and we all know that the custom GPT will not be able to read these vector values but what we've done is we've included metadata about our values over here that is actually text representation of the original data and what we're going to do is we're going to instruct our custom GPT to read this text instead of the vector values but even after after that we still have another very interesting problem. Because our data in Pinecon is stored as vectors, in order for Pinecon to be able to query our data it needs vectors as input as well, right? Which means we can't just ask a natural question and expect our custom GPT to be able to forward that on to Pinecon and get a reply from Pinecon. And our custom GPT as well cannot automatically vectorize our input for us and then upload it to Pinecon. And this is where our custom solution comes up. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a third party server to be a middleman. It's going to receive input from our custom GPT agent and it's going to vectorize it and then upload it over to Pinecon. It will then receive a reply from Pinecon, it will pass the reply and then send the past reply back to our custom GPT. It's quite cool and it's without doubt one of the coolest setups I've ever created in a custom GPT but here's the code that I've written to do that. So as you can see here what we're doing is we're importing Flask which is our server that we're going to be using and then we need OpenAI which is going to embed our request into vector embeddings that Pinecon can accept. Next we're going ahead and import 
supporting Pinecone because we'll need that to go ahead and run our query. And once again, we need our open AI key over here. I do want to send out an important note here because I am using one of the latest versions of the open AI API for Python. If you're using a version that's less than one, you do need to know that this code has changed since then. So you want to make sure you're using the latest version of the open AI package. All right, great. So once we're done with that, we also want to make sure we import our settings for the Pinecone API. And for that, we need the API key, the index name and the environment. And then we go ahead and initialize Pinecone over here. And then we also initialize our index. So we do all that before actually starting our server. Then we start the server. So as you can see here, the route I'm using is the tokenized route. You can run any route that you want. You can also run any function name that you want over here. And what I'm doing is that I'm getting the text from the requests. So this text is going to be included inside of the actual URL query inside Postman. This is exactly how it looks inside parameters. We have the text and then we have the text that we're going to tokenize and it's included right within the URL. So now once we get that text, now we have the actual question in natural language. What we're going to do is we're going to use OpenAI to embed this text into vectors. As you can see, I'm doing that right here. And then I go ahead and receive the embedding back. Then what I need to do is I need to use my, my Pinecone index here to go ahead and run a query for vectors that resemble this particular vector. And you can see I'm receiving that back here. Very important is that I am including the include metadata flag here, which makes sure that I get back the actual natural text descriptions. So these actual natural text descriptions, and these are very important for our GPT bot to be able to read because it will not be able to read the vectorized output. So as you can see, once I receive my result, I'm just converting them into a dictionary here. And then what I'm doing here is I'm just extracting the text. So we don't need the vectors. Vectors can be very long. And if you include them in your request, they will definitely slow down your GPT-4 bot. So you definitely don't want to be doing that. But what this line of code does here is that it just extracts the metadata from all the matches that we've got. And then it JSONifies it and then returns it back. And as you can see, I'm running this as a server on port 80 and at my local host. So when I go ahead and run this tokenizer Python file here on a server, it will run as an actual public server that everybody can have access to. So let's go ahead and set that up now. So what I have here is my Ubuntu server, and this is the server that's going to run the tokenizer script. Now, when I go ahead and run LS, you can see that I've uploaded my tokenizer Python script here, which contains our code for the server. And this script is available for download from a link in the description. And all we really want to do is we just want to make sure that we have the important packages installed inside of this Python environment. And after that, all we really want to do is we just want to come here and run Python 3 and the tokenizer file over here. I'll go ahead and give that a moment to run. And as you can see now, it's running and it's listening on its local host. Now, it's very important that you listen on port 80 here. Port 80 here is the port for HTTP requests. And if you want to use HTTPS requests, what you want to do is you want to set up a proper HTTPS server. And of course, if you're using this as an actual publication development, you do want to run it on a WSGI server here instead of just a, a Flask server. But because we're just testing this, there's actually no need for me to do that over here. And now because we have our custom server up and running, let's go ahead and query it in Postman to make sure it actually works. All right, so I've just gone ahead and moved my server over here to the left hand side. And to our right, we have Postman because I do want us to be able to see both of them as we're going ahead and running this query. As you can see here, I'm running this on HTTP, not HTTPS because we don't yet have an HTTPS port set up on my server. And I'm running this to the URL slash tokenize. And then I'm using a parameter here called text and its current value is what is data science. So what this is going to do is it's going to send this input to the server. The server will tokenize the request, send the tokenized request to Pinecon. Pinecon will reply with the data. The server is going to go ahead and extract only the metadata and then send it back as a list. And the server will go ahead and show us here that it's actually received a request. So I'm going to go ahead and send that. It takes its time requesting and the entire process is surprisingly quickly. And as you should see, the server has gone ahead and shown that it has received a new request. I'm going to go ahead and ask a new question. So now I'm asking, what do data scientists do? These particular questions were never answered in the book, but because we're using Pinecon, Pinecon will present all the relevant information that we need to know. So it's going to go ahead and run once again. And now it's going ahead and shown us again, it's received a new request. And then what's important to note here are the types of information that we're getting back. So we're getting back information that relates to our question. And this is the exact information that your custom GPT will need to know the important Pinecon information about your company. Now that we know that this works, but we do still have an interesting problem here. So in its current state, custom GPTs are unable to use HTTP requests and they only accept HTTPS requests. Furthermore, even if you self sign your HTTPS profile on your machine, it will still reject it because it will not detect it as an officially signed certificate. Now, if you're dealing with a company whose certificate is recognized and has already been set up, then you don't, then you really don't need to do this. But to solve this problem,
problem for us, what we're going to do is we're going to use an HTTP redirection program. So this website, B Scepter, is a really, really good website. What it does is it allows you to create your own temporary URL that you can use to forward requests to your own server. I will leave it linked in the description so that if you do need it, you can go ahead and visit it. And what it does here, as you can see, is it's converting requests that are going to this officially signed and recognized certificate over here to my own certificate over here. As you can see, this is an HTTP certificate and it's definitely not going to work in custom GPTs unless I find a way to sign it and sign it really, really well. But we don't need to do that. All I'll go ahead and do is I'll go ahead and copy this signed link over here. I'll go ahead and copy it and then I'll head back into Postman. I'm going to replace my initial URL over here with my new signed URL. And when you go ahead and hit send, as you can see, I get the exact same reply. But now I'm using an HTTPS certificate that is signed and recognized and will work inside of ChatGPT. Now that we have our server completely set up and ready for ChatGPT, let's get started with creating our custom GPT. And finally, here we are in familiar land. Now the setup for this custom GPT is quite simple. I've just called it data science GPT. When you're working with your company, you can call it whatever you want. And it just says, gets information from a book about machine learning. I want to highlight to you guys what the instructions look like. So what's important to note is that you tell the GPT that whenever it is asked a question, it uses the action in order to get the information that it needs. So as you can see here, I'm saying you are a GPT that gets information about a question that has been asked to you using the get information action. As you'll soon see, the get information action is the action that we have set up. You then use this information to answer the question by running the action while passing the question as the text parameter. As you remember, inside of Postman here, we have this text parameter and that's the question that's been asked and that's what the GPT needs to send to our endpoint. And then finally, I just say, do not hallucinate beyond the information that you get from the action just to prevent the GPT from going too far ahead into just creating its own information that's just imaginary to us and doesn't exist inside of our company data. Now let's take a look at the custom action. So again, I just called it book information, returns information about a book, and then I've gone ahead and specified my URL that I got on Bceptor over here. And then I'm indicating the path and custom action over here. The description gets information about a given topic. It's called get information. And then I'm using the parameters list here to pass the text query in correctly. Keep in mind here that it's quite important that this is passed inside of the query in our particular setup. If you have a setup where this information is needed in the body or anywhere else, you can also go ahead and do that over here. And then I'm just letting it know that this is the question you would like information for. And then we go ahead and just save that. And now we can finally start to ask our GPT questions. Now, once again, I have my custom GPT side to side with myself because I literally want you to see my custom GPT asking the server questions in real time. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to ask a simple question. So the question I'm asking is what are some important industries using machine learning? I'm going to go ahead and send it this question and let's see how it replies. So as you can see, it starts by trying to talk to my server over here. And then finally, it gets the information that it needed. You can see the server is also indicating that it was asked that question. And you can see that the IP address, this one over here, is actually different from my own IP address, which was this one when I was querying it myself. So as you can see, it's answering the question according to the information that it got. And so that's pretty cool. It's actually using information from that book to go ahead and answer this question. And that's the cool thing about using custom GPTs with your large company's data is that it will answer your question using your actual data and it will go ahead and phrase it properly a lot better than if you actually did not have access to this. So that's pretty much it for this particular video. Thanks a bunch for watching to this point. If you've watched until this point, you may as well just want to subscribe to this channel because I do release videos pretty much every day. Hope you guys are having a great time. I will catch you in the next video. Be sure to post pretty much any question that you want answered in those comments section. I always check them out and I will do a reply video to you like this one. Hope you've enjoyed. Have a good time.